Motherland. From the Motherland, the Battle of New Jersey. Rutgers took both meetings last season. Who will it be tonight? Welcome to Big East Basketball from the Continental Airlines Arena in East Rutherford, New Jersey. The Seton Hall Pirates host the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Good evening, everybody. Kenny Albert along with Ron Perry. Ron, both schools with new head coaches this season. Rutgers under Gary Waters with a record of 10-5, and five, led by their 6'10 sophomore, Irve Lamazana. Yeah, he's really coming up big lately and no bigger than the game recently. The big win for the Scarlet Knights against Georgetown. He was blocked shots. He had seven of them in the game. Made a big three at the end of regulation to send the game into overtime. He's got the headband. He's pumped up and in overtime deflects a pass as Rutgers seals the victory. A big one against the Hoyas and he led the way. And on the other side, Seton Hall under their first year head coach, Lewis Orr, the former New York Knicks Pirates with a record of eight up, seven down. Also led by a sophomore, Andre Barrett. Well, Barrett's playing very well so far this year for Seton Hall. He's leading the way in scoring and assists. He's also been in double figures every game this year, capable of rebounding, stealing the ball. He's doing it all from the quarterback position, finding the open man. Nice alley-oop to his teammate right there. Got the head up at all times. He's also a terrific penetrator looking for his offense and he can also penetrate from the outside pull up take the jump shot offensive minded but also great dishing the basketball Barrett has raised his average eight points per game from a year ago a long time rivalry two new head coaches get their first taste of it when we return back at the battle lands as we check out the starting lineups for Rutgers Rashad Kent Ricky Shields, Eugene Dabney up front, Jerome Coleman, Mike Sherrod in the backcourt for Seton Hall, Greg Morton, John Allen, and Charles Manga with Darius Lane and Andre Barrett. Should be a good one. Jerome Coleman, of course, has been leading the way out there. You can see the last four games shooting the ball <laughs> very well for Rutgers, just under 20 a game, and he can get it going, and he hopes to get it going here tonight against the Hall. And there is new Rutgers head coach Gary Waters. Led Kent State to a school record 24 wins a year ago. That's right, and of course they went to the NCAA tournament and had that big upset victory against Indiana. And off to a good start here in his first year at Rutgers. And Lewis Orr, the first former Big East player to become a Big East head coach. Led Sienna to 20 wins last year after four years as an assistant coach at his alma mater, Syracuse. Well, he put in his time, and of course, the first former Big East player to be a head coach in the league. Rutgers won both meetings last year. Seton Hall leading the series 5-4 in Big East play, 20-18 overall. Rashad Kent, Charles Manga on the opening tap and it's controlled by the Scarlet Knights. The New Jersey title on the line as you see Mike Kitts, Jim Luchansky, a couple of our officials tonight, along with Carl Hess. Rutgers will retain possession. Jerome Coleman will throw in from underneath. This is Kent, number 44. Dabney. Shields off the mark. In the backcourt for Seton Hall with Lane, Allen, Morton, and Manga up front. Pirates coming off the 85-70 loss in Syracuse on Tuesday night. Lane turns it over. Here come the Scarlet Knights and the rejection by Morton as he knocks Shields to the floor. Nice rejection by Morton. He's got that braced up right shoulder. He's had chronic shoulder problems. Lane left his feet last time on the turnover. And you've got the Hall in a 2-3 zone to start this game out. Rutgers 10-5, and 1-2 and in conference play. They won eight consecutive games earlier. Eight of their ten wins have come on their home floor. The steal by Lane. And Darius Lane takes it all the way. And will head to the free throw line as he was fouled by Jerome Coleman. A couple of turnovers early in this game. 
you expect a lot of defensive pressure from Rutgers, but out of the zone, a kind of a careless lob pass from inside, and Darius Lane all over. He looks pumped for this game. There's your reach-in foul, and Lane, boy, they could really use him to start getting hot. Been shooting it better last couple of games, had been in a drought. Good way to get it going is to take it hard to the rack early. Lane looking to make up for his second game against Rutgers last year. Scored 18 in the first, only one in the second meeting with the Scarlet Knights. Hard to believe the way he shoots the ball. He usually gets it going, but obviously in that one it wouldn't go down. Coleman from way out hits the three. <laughs> He's feeling it early. A lot of confidence to let that one rip from about 25. No problem. Man to man by Rutgers. Scarlet Knights with a one-point lead early. Manga bottled up by Kent. Another Seton Hall turnover. Here comes Shields driving on Morton. And he was stripped from behind by Barrett. Good recovery by Eugene Dabney. Now you take that good bounce anytime, and Rutgers looking to push the pace early. When Manga gets the ball down low for Seton Hall like that, big fella's got to go up strong with it. Pirates have not received much scoring from their front court. Allen, the freshman, leading the way at nearly 10 points per game, but the backcourt, Barrett, Lane, and Shine do most of the scoring for Seton Hall. Lane up off his feet again. He get caught. Coleman again from three off the mark, rebounded by Allen. Pirates working around, trailing by three. Here's Allen from three, in and out. And Dabney pulls it down. Quick pace so far. Both clubs looking to get things going quickly out of their offense. If the break's not there, move it around, make that extra pass to get the high percentage shot. A lot of talking in the newspapers the last couple of days, primarily by a couple of guys who will come off the bench, and we'll talk about it throughout the game. Irving Lamazana of Rutgers out of St. Patrick's High School and Marcus Toniel out of Seton Hall Prep. Rashad Kent bottled up by Charles Manga. Now Allen comes over to help out. Dabney rejected by Manga. Oh, Manga all over it defensively that time. Barrett pulls up and then feeds Manga on the offensive end on the follow. It's John Allen pulling Seton Hall to within one. I think Dabney, when he went up, might have caught a hand to the face. I believe he's bleeding, so he has to go off the court to stop the bleeding before he comes back in. And he's replaced by Hervé Lamazano, who hears it from the crowd here at the Meadowlands. Lamazano, the co-Big East Rookie of the Week last week. You talked about his... Solid effort on Saturday in the win over Georgetown. Huge, 19 points, seven rebounds, seven blocks. He can get it going as he did now, a nice drive. Mike Sharon taking it to the hoop. There's a lot of quickness. Both of these teams have quickness and they're matching up very well so far. Rutgers tight man-to-man -man defense, the hall in the zone. Allen was hit by Shields. First personal foul on Shields. Check out Dabney. Oh, there he is right there. Manga, after he deflected the ball, the hand came down and caught him right in the mouth. And Seton Hall with four blocks already. Manga leading the way. And we have not yet played four minutes. Manga setting the pick. Lane double team, throws it back out. Barrett, nice pass. Andre Barrett threw the foul underneath. It's on Kent, and it's his first. You really look for your point guard to be a penetrator. Barrett draws two red jerseys up close and personal with a nice scoop pass. Three and a half minutes in, Rutgers by three, and now we are tied as Darius Lane hits from behind the arc. That's a great shot, good concentration. Lane didn't have a lot of time to release it. Lane led the Big East last season in three-point field goals made with 103. Has five of the Pirates' seven points here tonight. Lane seems really fired up for this game, Kenny. He's moving quickly out there, and he was pumped when he made the tray. Here's Coleman from three. Oh, Sherrod! 
in big man's land and Mike Sherrod off to a nice start this season. Foul call on Morton, his first. Well, Sherrod really got up on that one. He's quick. We've seen him with the dribble, but he had some hang time. Just wait for that rebound to come down. Nobody blocked out the little guy that time. Done a great job, huh? Last couple of games, 13 assists, only two turnovers. If you can get anything better than a two to one assist to turnover ratio from your point guard, he's doing very well. Last couple, six to one. That's getting the job done. Sherrod only a 54% free throw shooter. And he hits on one of two as a as a team, Ron Rutgers. 58% from the line. Yeah, that's not effective. Oh, nice job by Barrett. Oh, and he is rejected by Lamazana. Coast to coast, but don't come down low or I'm going to send it out of there. Rutgers with a one-point lead. Just over four minutes gone by as Lamazana says, take that out for it, Barrett. Ron Perry back at the Meadowlands. Rutgers with a one-point lead early. Well, Seton Hall on Tuesday night lost up in the Carrier Dome 85-70 as Lewis Orr returned. Shaking hands with Bernie Fine, Syracuse associate head coach, and then making his way down towards his former head coach back in the late 70s, Jim Beheim. That's great stuff right there. Lewis Orr has got to be... Very, very strange to come back and be coaching like that. Of course, he played for Jimmy Bayheim. Some nice embraces. He would have loved to have gone up there and come away with the W. As you can see, 79-80, the leading scorer in the Big East. And Lewis was quite a player. He's got the distinguished look, though, now that he's sitting on the bench, and he is calling the shots. Much different than when you're in the huddle as a player having to call the plays. He played on Jim Bayheim's first four teams at Syracuse. Their record during his four years, 100 wins, 18 losses. Dynamite. They've just won, won, won up there under Jim Beheim's watch. A little zone action right now by Rutgers. 1-2-2. Two, two. Lane would be the main guy. And Barrett, of course, from the perimeter. But that's the strength of Seton Hall. And, of course, throw Allen in there. Here's Barrett around Lamazana. Dishing back out to Lane. Off the side of the rim, kept alive by Manga. Nice job. Barrett from three. That was nicely done. Give credit to Manga. He couldn't grab that ball, kept it alive to his teammates, and then good rotation to Barrett. We talked about Barrett. He can really stick that three. Seton Hall up by two. We've played five minutes. The Hall loves the three. They make about nine a game, so they'll look early and often, but they've got to get some to go down. They take 26 a game. Kent bottled up by Manga. Terrific defensive start tonight for Seton Hall. A lot of contact on that one. Might have been a break there for the Hall. Seton Hall with a two-point lead. Barrett and Lane in the backcourt. Allen, Morton, and Manga up front. Allen. Pulls up off the front of the rim, rebounded by Sharon. I would expect Rutgers to really extend that defense and get a hand in the face of the Seton Hall perimeter game tonight. Sharon takes it to the paint once again. Wow, you talk about quickness. Andre Barrett and Mike Sharon. You're seeing a couple of the quickest backwood guys, and both of them have been very effective for their teams this year. Sharon out of ropes in high school. Andre Barrett, former star at Rice High School. A lot of New York City talent here, Kenny. These guys have played against great competition for a lot of years. Now, that's why when you're a freshman or a sophomore with that kind of background, you've seen a lot of intense competition, not to mention a lot of the competition at the AAU level. And now both first-year head coaches looking to keep some of the New Jersey stars in state over the next few years. Absolutely. That's why when you talked about Lamazana and Tony L, you get a little of the New Jersey prep school action right there. Nice drive. Kent with the rebound. Sherrod quickly into the front court. Coleman from three. Manka, another rebound. Great penetration again. A little quick with the shot perhaps, but Coleman, he can knock those down. 
but neither team establishing anything in the, the box area early. Not even looking for it. There you go. There you go. That's what the hole needs. Morton with that good move. You've got to take a few of those shots to bring the defense in close to the bucket. Greg Morton, who did not score for the first time this season in Syracuse on Tuesday, has been bothered by a, a shoulder injury that kept him out of two games. Now, he's a kid who's got good experience. You've got to take a few shots in there, go to the foul line, and the same goes for Manga. Coleman from three from straight away. He's missed his last three. Pirates working around for Morton, way off the mark. Rebounded by Lamazana. Probably could have gotten that one in a step or two. He was wide open on the wing. Lamazana from three over Manga. Kent keeps it alive for Rutgers. Scarlet Knights trailing by two. And Lamazana draws the foul. Manga is called for the block. His second. So my initial reaction is this is a good call. Manga doesn't establish. That's a good call. Manga doesn't establish position on that when he's riding in there on Lamazana picking up that blocking foul. Couple of substitutions on both sides for Rutgers. Joel Wigan and Jason McCoy check in. Desmond Herod, Marcus Toniel, and Damian Frey now in the game for Seton Hall. Lamazana tied up. Seton Hall will take possession. Well, Lamazana and Tony L both on the court right now. We'll, we'll talk more about those comments. In fact, Tony L issued an apology today for some of his statements yesterday, responding to the comments from Lamazana earlier this week. Well, you know what the best comment probably would be moving forward is no comment. But they're, you know, they're competitors and they played against each other, so they have a few thoughts. Your best bet is to not get that into the newspaper. By the way, they're not matched up on the court right now. Frank Morton called for the offensive foul. We'll be right back. Well, Scarlet Knights sophomore Irve Lamazana quoted earlier this week. He said, Marcus Toniel was my biggest rival in high school. I didn't like him. He didn't like me. To this day, I still don't like him. <laughs> I decided I did not want to go to Seton Hall. I wanted to go to a school where I would make sure that I would play them. I wanted to prove to everybody that I was the better player. Rutgers was basically my last choice. I came to Rutgers out of revenge. <laughs> Those are strong words, Kenny. you got to back up those kind of words. And again, you're better off, I think, not getting into it at all. But certainly, Irve laid it on the line right there. And we'll see how this prevails in the game. He certainly, if he has a Georgetown type of game, that was something else the other, the other game where Rutgers beat Georgetown as he really stepped it up. A lot of talent on the floor with both guys, quite frankly. In that game, Lamazana, 19 points, seven rebounds, seven blocked shots. Shot clock down to seven. As Ty Shine checks into the game for the Pirates. Andre Barrett sits down. Five on the shot clock. Wigan underneath for Kareem Wright with two on the shot clock. He ties the game at 12. Nice job getting it down low in the paint area by the Scarlet Knights. Some pressure. Gary Waters, his whole game is predicated on pressure, defense, up tempo. Ten seconds is being challenged, and they don't get it there in time. Good pressure. Gary Waters stresses the defense, up tempo, put the pressure on. Now, when you can score, right now Gary Waters is going to that full court pressure and it paid off there. Lamazala double teamed as Frey came over to help out. Nine minutes in, tied at 12. Wigan for McCoy. Lamazana posting up Herod. And Desmond Herod is called for the push. His first personal foul. It was Lamazana going down low as Herod blocked him down low and really pushed off so he can go Lamazana to the perimeter or he can be tough inside as well. 2-3 zone by the Pirates. Rutgers with Wigan, Coleman, McCoy, Wright, and Lamazana. 
on the floor. Rutgers 12, Seton Hall 12. Ten and a half to go. First half from the Meadowlands. Right, has position. This is back out. McCoy unable to hit from three. Kept alive, offensive rebound by Coleman. Morton got the hand in. Kept it away from Lamazana. Both teams going at it tonight, Kenny, with the headbands, huh? Yep. Rutgers the red, Seton Hall the white. Look like Warriors out in that floor. Getting after it in this one. Both teams color coordinated, even in the headband department. Lamazana dishing off for Coleman. And a bad pass. McCoy did not make the catch. Seen it a couple of times where the backcourt people get caught up in the air. Coleman that time, not only up in the air, but under the basket with nowhere to go. That's when you tend to turn it over. Here's that pressure. This time the Pirates get it across. Ty Shine. Now running the point for Seton Hall. Frey had some trouble with it. Out of bounds off Damian Frey. Herod really didn't give Frey a good look that time. He gave him a no-look pass. He didn't put it softly over there to his teammate. You gotta have your hands ready. But you also gotta lay it in there. Eugene Dabney, Rashad Kent back in for Rutgers. Lamazana and Wright sit down. Both coaches going to the benches early. They'll use eight, nine, ten man rotations. One, two, two zone right here by Seton Hall. Three quarter court pressure. Clearly taking care of the ball as well as shooting it, of course, always important. You gotta limit those turnovers. Nice pass. Wigan with the feet underneath for Dabney. And he was hit by Tony L. That's his first personal foul. The pace has slowed down a bit over these last couple of minutes. Both teams running early. I think you'll see that in this game. When the break is there, both clubs will run. Well, wide open. Dabney off the back of the rim. Kent could not hit on the follow. And on the fourth opportunity, it's tapped home by Dabney. Great job on the boards by Rutgers. The hall's got to block out better than that one. Now Lewis Orr going to his bench once again as Darius Lane and Mauricio Branwell get set to check in. Ty Shine, the veteran out there. Been pretty productive shooting wise when he's been on the floor, but his minutes down this year. Barrett is really taking over those point guard duties. Shine looking to work, work himself into position. Steph throws it back out with six on the shot clock. Tony L spinning into the paint, the fadeaway off the front of the rim. Nice defensive set by Rutgers, not a great shot by Tony L. Off balance, fading away. Rutgers run just one of seven from three. Coleman hit early. And they've gone cold. Now that to me means try to penetrate then. Get yourself, you know, 14, 15 feet from the goal instead of 20. And then back it out after you get a couple to go. Ten on the shot clock. And the hold is called underneath. Damian Frey commits his first. And the Scarlet Knights will now shoot one and one as Lane and Bradwell check in. Morton and Herod sit down. Manga also back in the game, replacing Damian Frey. Wow, check out those numbers. Uh, he's talking to himself now. I mean, Kent, he's an inside post-up player, but he's just got himself right now with a total lack of confidence from the line. Yeah, he's basically pushing that one up there. He's going to sit back, relax, and shoot that ball. It can't go any worse than it is for Kent right now from the stripe. Now four for his last 25. Mangus sets the pitch. Shy lets one go from three. No good. Rutgers with a two-point lead. Eight minutes remaining in this first half. Nice touch from the outside. Eugene Dabney now with a game-high six points. Hey, there's no doubt about it. When you get the open look, that's when you tend to get it to go down, as Dabney did right there. Lane pulls up. Does not get the roll. Knocked out of bounds. And it will be Rutgers basketball. When we return, 7.39 remaining. First half, Scarlet Knights leading by four. Back to Continental Airlines Arena. It's Big East basketball. Rutgers 
up by four with 7.39 to go first half. Some penetration right here, and when you do that, Coleman back to Dabney. You get the nice, clean look. Dabney has hit a couple of shots for Seton Hall. For Rutgers, he tipped one in, and now the nice shot. Rutgers has played great defense over the last five and a half. You get some open looks, you tend to knock them down. We've seen some threes not go down, but a number of them have been quick shots that have been contested. From the Meadowlands, Kenny Albert, Ron Perry. Rutgers leading Seton Hall by four. And the Pirates have not scored in over five and a half minutes. They're shooting only 31% from the field. Rutgers will maintain possession as John Allen, the impressive freshman, checks back in for Lewis Rowe, replacing Ty Shine. These are two talented teams. A lot of quality young players trying to mesh together out there. Rutgers now one of eight from three as Coleman, who hit the three early, has gone cold. He's got to look to penetrate now. It's just not going for him right now. Allen for Brownwell. Another rebound for Kent. That's his seventh. And then the Scarlet Knights turn it over. Gary Ward is not happy. Kent knew as soon as he let it go. He knew that he led that one too much. Get the outlet, run the floor, and get down the court. Again, pressure from the Scarlet Knights in the backcourt, and Darius Lane is forced to call timeout. Good job by Lane. Problem was Lane just crossed midcourt and got trapped in the worst possible spot. Best spot, of course, for Rutgers. Good heads up play to probably use a 30 right here. Let's take a moment, Ron, to thank our corporate partner, Cooper Tire. Proud to be the official tire of the Big East Conference. Cooper Tires, drive on. Well, you talked about the Gary Waters system. In fact, some refer to it as Waters pressure. <laughs> well, it is. It's predicated on pressure. Get after it, up-tempo, but also set up if you don't have it. But a lot of defensive pressure. That keys the offense. His kids are playing hard. And Lewis Orr, Seton Hall also getting after it in this game. This is a pretty low-scoring first half so far. Both coaches have got their team playing tough D. Neither team has really consistently found the shooting touch so far. Seton Hall has now scored in over six minutes. Last Pirate points. Greg Morton with 13.09 on the clock. Barrett with a rainbow and it gets the roll. Seton Hall fortunate Manga to not get called for offensive goaltending. He hit the rim. I guess the ball was not up over the cylinder when it happened, but it was awfully close. Nice runner by Barrett, though. So despite the Pirates not scoring in over six minutes, they trail by only two. Shields rejected by Allen. That was the fifth Seton Hall block shot of this first half. Great interior defense. So even though the, even though the Hall has struggled shooting the basketball and scoring, Rutgers hasn't been doing much at the offensive end as well. Just over six minutes to go, first half. Two-point Rutgers lead. First meeting of the season. Rutgers won both last year. Last time Rutgers won three in a row over Seton Hall. Back in 1980, 77 through 80, the last time they won three straight in this series. Great trap inside, huh? Just to lead the break. Got to capitalize, though. Now Bradwell throws it back out. Allen using the screen set by Barrett. Allen from Manga. Oh, nice goal of pass, and Bradwell hits. And will head to the free throw line. A nice catch by Branwell, cutting to the basket. You know, a lot of guys watch the ball when their teammates have it, but Mauricio Branwell does a nice job here to cut to the goal. And Manga makes that nice bounce pass. This is a nice job in the interior. Kent with the reach. That's as good a look as Seton Hall has really had in this game. And Branwell, he's down. He's not out, though, as he pumps the fist. Brownwell, a hard worker, a high-energy player. Freshman out of Brooklyn. Played at Dunbar High School down in D.C. Both 
teams have some good looking young players. They need some more experience. Wayne keeps it alive. And Seton Hall now up by two. Just great hustle that time. Seton Hall overcomes the drought they were in and hang right in. 2-2-1 two, two, pressure themselves. And a timeout called by Gary Waters. And Seton Hall takes one out of his book. Yeah, great pressure there by Seton Hall. Gary Waters did not like what he saw. He called that timeout. He's trying to get his troops to be more aggressive. He says, you've got to recognize the pressure. Come to the middle and attack it. And he is very excited in that timeout. He wants to see the intensity level back up over there. Tonight's Big East game is produced and distributed by ESPN Regional Television. 23 remaining first half from the Meadowlands. Seton Hall on a 6-0 run. And they lead by two. Nice runner by Barrett that time. Look at this shot. He gets it up over the defense. Now, if the rim was hit there, that ball was up over the cylinder. It might have been Seton Hall catching a break on that one. Tough to tell on that replay. But in live action, I thought that the rim was hit, Kenny. Barrett's first field goal of the game round is one for five. John Oksani, number 32, and Irve Lamazana, number one, back in the game now for Rutgers. As Wright goes to the floor. Wright, I think Wright's out of bounds. He dove, he got it, but he was laying on the side out of bounds. He just didn't catch that ball from Lamazana. Sixth Rutgers turnover of tonight's game. They trail by two, five minutes to go. First half. Barrett walks it across. Well, Rutgers has played some tough man to man. They play a great team half court defense, so tough, tight man, but they're also in a good help out position. Well called on Coleman as he grabbed hold of Darius Lane. That's number two on uh, Jerome Coleman. Yeah, Gary Waters will go to the bench there. He doesn't want. Coleman to pick up a quick third with 4.46 to go first half. So he's replaced by Joel Wigan, freshman from the Bronx. He's another freshman. We've really, we've got some quality young guys coming into this game. Well, one of the seniors in the game, Darius Lane, hits his second three. Lane now with 10 points. Well, he's been the offensive difference. He's got roughly half of the Hall's points. They've got 21. He's got the crowd involved. 2-3 Hall zone. Rutgers has got to hit a couple of shots to penetrate this zone. Lamazana cross court. And now Kareem White. Manga made contact. And for Charles Manga, his third personal foul. He'll quickly get substituted for by Lewis Orr. Kareem Wright, he is a big man down low. 6'9", 285. Good up fake that time. That was the key to drawing that foul. And important for Rutgers to get some points out of this exchange. Rutgers one for three from the line tonight. Now one for four. For the season, as we mentioned, 58% from the line. Next to last in the Big East in their game against Pitt. The eight-point loss on Tuesday, they were 10 of 23 from the charity strike. Well, there you go. In these tight, tough games, you've got to make some foul shots. Wright gets that second one. He's just a 44% foul shooter. The two teams combined tonight, Ron, two of seven from the line. That's the, the, those numbers are disappointing when you think of the talent level out there. Great trap. And Allen got it across to Brownwell. Underneath to Damian Frey, and he's fouled by Kareem Wright. It was a hard foul as Frey was going up to stuff that one. Well, the key to this one was Seton Hall's ability to get out of the trap. It was a good read of the defense there, though. The ball got dished inside. I think it was Branwell with the dish as Wright came up. You don't make your mind up going up the court on that, as you see Frey with his minutes and points this year. He's played well the, as of late. Yeah, he has. He stepped it up. He's talented. He's come into the game. He's gotten right into the action in this one. But you let the defense tell you what to do when you're out there and you're breaking with the basketball. With some more free throw shooting problems. Go, 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 go. 
Pirates now 0 for 3 from the line. I really think today, Kenny, guys are more physically talented. They're quicker, the dunking, the moves, but you know, free throw shooting should be much better than what we see in sort of a game out, game out, game in, game out job from the line. Got to make some of these foul shots with some more practice. Andre Barrett calling for the block on Mike Sherrod. Barrett's first personal. That was your free throw shooting. <laughs> You know what, I didn't have the quickness or the leaping ability of these guys, so I felt I had a factor for that by, uh, to make up for it by making some foul shots, but I uh, was a little bit more accurate than what I'm seeing tonight, Kenny. Over 80? Yep. Over 90? Right around there. High, very high 80s. Um, during the career. There's a lot of practice, but uh, I felt with no one covering me, I have a good chance to make those things. Look at this quickness, look at that! No one covering Barrett, he's too quick. Wow. Just went right by people. You can't teach that quickness. He's just got it. Lane and Barrett have combined to score 17 of Seton Hall's 24 points. Well, if the Hall was in a drought before, it's Rutgers now. They're having trouble finding a way. They need one here just to get it going. Oh, nice steal. And Lane slams it home. Seton Hall with a nine-point lead, a 13-to-1 Pirates run. Great job. They've keyed it off their defense. They're blocking shots, playing tough in the half-court set. And check it out. The quickness in the backcourt. Andre Barrett just runs right by Kareem Wright. Lamazana can't get there in time. Then a long pass, a long pass going cross court away from the basket by Lamazana. And with this quickness, you can't lob the ball out there. Lane, he has been very focused from the beginning of this game. And as a senior, he wants it in the hall, taking advantage off turnovers. For the season, Lane and Barrett combined to score 42% of Seton Hall's points tonight. They've scored 19 of 26. Saw a nice job out there. Carl Hess out of that timeout went over and spoke to Darius Lane, and I'm almost certain that what he said to him is, when you dunk the basketball, don't be hanging on that rim unless there's someone underneath you. I gave you a break on that one. Wiggin fishing off for Dabney. Here you go. Here you go. And Asherod brings it back out. Three minutes to go, first half. Seton Hall on top. 26-17. Shot clock now at 10. As Lane grabbed hold of Sherrod. First personal foul on Lane. So Mike Sherrod will head to the free throw line for two shots. 10th team foul against the Pirates. Sherrod one of three tonight. 54%. On the season, the sophomore out of Robeson High School in Brooklyn. He's really getting, you know, better and better with experience. He's worked on his shot. He's extremely quick. He seems to be making better decisions with the ball. He's got about a two-to-one assist to turnover ratio this year. And a good matchup tonight with Andre Barrett, who's lightning quick for the hall. Oh my God! Sherrod hits one of two. Seton Hall basketball, Pirates with an eight-point lead. Both teams one and two in conference play so far this season. Seton Hall beat Virginia Tech, lost to Boston College, and Syracuse. A lot of balance this year. You're going to see, I think you're going to see team, you know, guys that win the East and West. You've got Connecticut and Pitt right now undefeated up top of the West Division. You're going to see teams lose four or five games this year and win divisions. It's going to be that competitive. Oh, that's a walk. A steal by Wigan, and then he gave it right back. Timeout on the floor. 2.22 remaining. First half. The guards leading the way for the Pirates. Back at the Meadowlands, Kenny Albert with Ron Curry. The Battle of New Jersey. And right now, Seton Hall with the edge. Leading Rutgers 26-18.
Well, it's been a good run by Seton Hall. It was Rutgers midway through the first half that had the run and Seton Hall the drought. The way these guys are defending, you're going to see that in this game. Lane, though, has really stepped up his game for the Hall. He's been the, he's been the difference out there and the main reason why Seton Hall up right now by eight. Remember, Ron, earlier this half, Pirates went over six minutes without scoring. But they lead by eight points. Barrett and Lane combining for 19 of their 26. Well, they match up well, and they've really gone at it defensively. So that's why we've got our pretty low scoring, relatively tight first half. We have not, has not featured good shooting, but the defensive intensity has been there on most shots. You get a guy in your face. Allen. Like that. Rejected. He was surrounded by three Scarlet Knights. Either Lamazana or McCoy got a piece of them. They are long in there, too. You've got long arms and good height. Forget about it. Rejection time. Under two minutes to go in the half. Gerard with Coleman, Wigan, Lamazana, and Dabney. Lamazana turns it over. Lane to Barrett. Damian Frey. And he will head to the line. Damian Frey, the trailer on the play. We talked about Barrett at the beginning. And he really is the, the catalyst. Nice up job by Lane, but they find Barrett and check him out. He finds the open man, the trailer Frey. And the trailer, the man that comes down behind the point guard action in the wings on a break. He came right down the middle. The defense went toward Barrett. Another nice look. Play now two of three from the line after he was fouled by Lamazano. Coming up at the half, our Big East wire. Brandon Knight, one of the big stories in the Big East this season, plus first half stats and highlights. Yeah, Brandon Knight playing great point guard for Pitt. Gray makes the second one, and Pitt's certainly the surprise team in the conference so far this year. 15 and 1. <laughs> 3-0 in the Big East for the first time in 10 years. Yeah, their confidence is sky high, playing great defense, playing very well as a team, led by Knight. Knight out of Seton Hall Prep in East Orange. You know, you High school know. teammate of Marcus Tony L. of Seton Hall. Brandon Knight, second in assists in the conference. Trailing only Chris Thomas of Notre Dame. Not the turnover by Rutgers. Lane to Frey, and on the follow, it's Brownwell, who's played well here in this first half. Nice job with bench production by Lewis Orr's club. Thought it was an unselfish pass by Lane. He could have gone up with that one. Rutgers needs to keep their poise right now and go up strong. Whatever they do, they can't hesitate. 17-3 run by Seton Hall. Aksani on the follow of the Dabney miss. Great work by Aksani. That's just blue collar stuff right around the basket. Sheer will got that one to tip home. Rod, at one point, this game was tied at 16. It's now 30 to 20, Seton Hall. Now they've just really had a great defensive, you know, late run here in the second half, and they shot it much better. Fourth three point field goal of the game for the Hall. Two apiece for Barrett. Lane. The fans on their feet. Ten seconds to go in the half. A 13-point Seton Hall lead. The only way you quiet that down is to get a shot to go. Make it a good one if you're Rutgers. They're really standing on the perimeter, though. Wigan off the mark from three as the first half comes to an end. Great run by Seton Hall. 19-4 to four over the last 540. Teed off. Very stubborn. Half-court defense and traps. Nice job out there. 22 of Seton Hall's 33 points scored by the backcourt combination of Barrett and Lane. An American hero sits in silence in New York Harbor. She has defended our shores. She is the USS Intrepid. Climb aboard and discover our history heritage and the largest classroom afloat. The Intrepid. And Welcome back to the Meadowlands. Halftime of tonight's game between the Rutgers Scarlet Knights and the Seton Hall Pirates. Time now for our Big East Flyer. 
on the subject of our Big East Wild tonight is Pitt Panthers junior guard, Brandon Knight. Well, he's having just a spectacular season so far for the Pitt Panthers. He's making great decisions with the ball. He quarterbacks the Pitt team, finds the open man, whether it's Julius Page or Deron Brown. They're just playing great basketball for Ben Holland. He also leads the team in steals. Very quick hands. He is the catalyst that makes the Panthers go. He's also shooting the ball very well, getting it in the paint. He's also shooting the ball very well from three-point land. Had him recently against St. John's, made five threes in the first half. He's got the most threes made in the Big East, leads the team in scoring and assists. He also chips in with just under five boards a game, playing great. Brad tonight out of Seton Hall Prep in East Orange, New Jersey. Pitt off to their first 3-0 start in the Big East in 10 seasons. When we come back, Ron and I will take you through first half stats and highlights from the Meadowlands. Back at the Meadowlands, Seton Hall leading Rutgers at halftime by the score of 33-20. As we welcome you back, Kenny Albert along with Ron Perry. The run after Seton Hall went six and a half minutes without scoring. They finished the first half on a 21-4 run. How do you figure it? They just stayed with their defensive plan. Even though they didn't score for that five and a half minutes, Rutgers had only built up a four-point lead. Then as the defense continued to hold, they got some steals. Rutgers turned it over. They got some layups, started to hit some shots from the outside with Lane and Barrett and company, and it was a good first half. Time now to take a look at first half highlights. Well, Andre Barrett was really quick out there for Seton Hall. Talked about him at the beginning. Just blows by the pack on that drive. And a beautiful runner here as he gets that ball to just float in. He is so quick to the goal, but he can also stick it from the outside. But the big half, Darius Lane. Nice penetration, dish back. Lane was great shooting it and also the defense. I thought he played with a high level of intensity from the get-go in this game, leading the hall in the first half. How about Gary Waters though, when he's looking at this, that's not at all what he was looking for. He wants to reverse that in the second half. The first half numbers, Rutgers shot only 30% from the field. Seton Hall, 46%, including four of eight from three. Wow, Seton Hall really capitalized on points off turnovers, and Rutgers has got to shoot it better in the second half. They've got to do a better job of finishing off when they get the ball to the goal. And you know what? They've come back from deficits here before. It's 13. I got a feeling they're going to tighten this thing up in the second half. Well, they trailed by 13 last year here at the Meadowlands. Rutgers came back from a 17-point deficit to win. Could it happen again? Welcome to the... Back at the Meadowlands as we get set for the start of the second half. Solid effort by the Seton Hall Pirates. Down the stretch of the first half led by their backcourt combination. Darius Lane and Andre Barrett have outscored the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Well, it was a tough offensive half for Rutgers. Let's face it, with just 20 in the first half, they've just got to let it rip some more. I'm, I'm almost sure Gary Waters said we're going to let some more full court pressure go on out there, try to open this game up some more, let it rip, get some transition hoops. But that was a great job by the backcourt of Seton Hall. And you got to credit Seton Hall's defense in the first half. Pirates shot just under 50%. Barrett and Lane, both two of three from three-point range. They combined to shoot nine of 16 overall. Pirates coming off the 15-point loss in Syracuse on Tuesday night, and Lewis Orr sends out his starting five to begin the second half. Lane and Barrett with Allen, Morton, and Manga. It's a quick lineup. Manga, of course, will anchor things down low. Allen, Lane, Barrett, this is the group that was out there to begin it. Man-to-man -man by Rutgers. They need some stops early. The early minutes of the second half, important for Rutgers to get back in. Allen driving baseline, and he's rejected by Dabney. The fourth block shot for Rutgers. Seton Hall has blocked six. Has it been easy taking it down to the basket tonight? Both clubs' big men have done a good job. Man-to-man -man by the Hall. They played a lot of zone in the first half. A little adjustment here by Lewis Orr. 
Gary Waters going with his starting five. Shields, Kent, Dabney up front, Sharon and Coleman in the backcourt. Coleman, a guy that was cold for his half. He could, if he could get a hot hand, that would be a big lift for the Scarlet Knights. Shot clock winding down. Sherrod off the back of the rim, rebounded by Manga, his fourth. Rebounding-wise in the first half run, Rutgers had the edge 22-18, including 12 offensive rebounds by the Scarlet Knights. They just didn't cash in. They got some good opportunities. You've got to rebound and follow through and score. One minute in, second half. Seton Hall by 13. And if you're Seton Hall, you don't want to have any let up in this game. You want to continue to play hard to see if you can put this game away early. I'll tell you what, in Big East action, Kenny, you can't relax at all this year. Teams will come right back at you. A lot of even matchups. Kent bottled up. Pirates with the numbers. Barrett pulls up. Seton Hall by 15. 12 points now for Andre Barrett. Well, Gary Waters really wanted the call last time. A lot of contact as Kent went up inside, trying to draw the foul. Were you surprised he didn't get it? Yeah, I thought there was enough contact there. They're banging away, and Manga and Kent are having an absolute war down low. Coleman, nice touch. Only five points for Jerome Coleman, who leads Rutgers at 16 per game. Coleman in the first half round, one of seven from the field. What I like there, though, is he got the ball in the paint there. He didn't go to the three early. That can build the confidence and get you on a good streak. Manga backing in on Kent. Kent altered the shot, kept alive by Shields. Here's Sherrod quickly into the front court for Rutgers. Shields from three over. Allen nails it. Oh! Now, I said no hesitation, and Shields did not hesitate at all there. He pulled up. He made a very difficult three, though. That's a lift for Rutgers. They didn't have that kind of shot going in the first half. Well, Shields had not scored in the first half. Allen from Barrett. Kept alive by Morton. Seton Hall's lead is now 10. Three minutes in, second half. Barrett from way out. Neither team bashful about taking the three-point shot. Two-three zone now by the Hall. They use this very effectively in the first half. Coleman from three, off the front of the rim. He felt he might have been hit on that one. He was way out though. Got to get a little closer. Manga. Manga watched by Kent. Pirates working around with 12 on the shot clock. Barrett from three for the third time tonight. Well, Barrett's doing a great job, playing a very good floor game for Seton Hall, also coming up with some big shots. Rutgers has just got to extend their defense. The Hall not looking inside at all right now. We talked about the 2 3 Seton Hall defense. Lewis Orr, of course, grew up. Playing and then coaching under Jim Beheim at Syracuse. 2-3, the staple of the Syracuse defense. Absolutely. They've done that so well the past five or six years. The shot Kent got hit. Gary Waters working it over there. Felt that was very similar to a couple of minutes ago when Kent went up and there was no call. Third personal foul on Greg Morton. Nice catch by Kent. He really draws a crowd, though. He's either going to go up or get that ball right out of there. He's got three white jerseys around him. He's a tough kid. He's bang, banging away in there. Takes the headband off. Why not just foul Kent every time down the floor? The way he shoots free throws. Yeah. Well, that's it. He's got to get it and try to release. Got a nice stroke from the line. He let that ball go nicely. Just wouldn't go for him. And now he's thinking. He's now four for his last 26, four for his last 27. Kept alive by Coleman, he could not hit. And it bounces into the hands of Darius Lane. Rutgers from the line tonight, now three of 10. That's not gonna get it done for you.
Sherrod looks to slip through, and goaltending is the call on Morton. Good call, nice drive. That's a big basket for Rutgers. Get something positive going into this timeout. Four and a half in, second half. Seton Hall with an 11 point advantage. Seton Hall up by 11, 15 and a half to go. Second half, Big East action at the Continental Airlines Arena. And Rutgers has just had a tough time getting it going tonight. Here's, a, here's an exchange right here where, where Kent goes up. It looks like he gets hit inside by, I think it's Manga down low. And Andre Barrett comes right back. Barrett's been unstoppable with that jumper. Playing a great floor game. That's a four-point swing. Maybe four if Kent's able to get the ball to go down low. He's struggled from the stripe. He's just got to keep working at it. Got the headband off now. Been a tough night for Rashad. 0 for 5 from the floor, 0 for 3 from the line. Keep working at it. Those 15 and a half to go. Barrett, on the other hand, having a very good night, and it's been Barrett and Lane. They've been the difference in this game for the Hall. They've combined to score 27 of Seton Hall's 38 points. Matching Rutgers' number in the game. It's been a low-scoring game. Thought we'd have more up-tempo action, but the defensive pressure in a game where neither team's really shot it exceptionally well has kept it a half-court game. And Barrett fouled by Sherrod. Sherrod's first personal. Sending Andre Barrett to the free-throw line. A little bit of a ride right there, and he catches him. A lot of ball, but came over the shoulder with it. Barrett does a nice job of sealing his man off. He gets inside, just knows where he is on the floor. Very experienced, and I say that <laughs> even though he's just a sophomore. He's a young player, but he's got a lot of experience. I thought he was experienced last year as a freshman. Competition he's played against. Barrett, 74% from the line this season. Now has 16 points. He extends the Pirates' lead to 13. You find point guards in this league. You think of young guys like Barrett. And got a chance to see Talik Brown, who's playing very well for UConn. Oh, Coleman goes nice. to the right nice. hand. Nice. Troy Bell, of course, for Boston College. And we talked about him at halftime. You got a chance to look at Brandon Knight. He's really stepped it up for Pitt. Andre Barrett, Ron, with all seven of Seton Hall's points in the second half, no longer. Is that a three right there? Yep. Oh, tough one by Lane falling away. See, he's clearing out on the floor right now, and he can make those kind of shots. Shields from three on the other end. Now it's taking a while. It seems like Rutgers starting to heat up, putting some pressure on it, and they're not hesitating. They're getting the looks, and they're going right with it. You mentioned Troy Bell of Boston College. Like Darius Lane, a Minnesota native. Making their way to the, the Northeast for a little basketball, huh? Former Connecticut Husky, Khalid El Amin, also from the state of Minnesota. With some fine backcourt players right there. Shields in and out, Sherrod. Strong work on the boards tonight for the six foot two sophomore, Mike Sherrod. He leads Rutgers with 10. Suddenly it's a nine point game. As you saw in the first half, Seton Hall went cold. They're getting a lot of perimeter points. They start missing a few shots. Rutgers will have their opportunity. Allen hits the three. <laughs> They're hot now. They're clicking. And they seem to be moving the ball very effectively, getting clean looks right now. John Allen out of Coatesville, Pennsylvania, broke Richard Hamilton's high school scoring record at Coatesville. Rip Hamilton, Coatesville. Great player for UConn. Jimmy Calhoun getting it done now in the NBA. Michael Jordan. Coleman, strong oh, move to the hoop once again. Coleman heating up here in the second half. Suddenly Rutgers for the first time tonight, Kenny. They seem to be getting sort of a flow going offensively. They've got to start stopping Seton Hall defensively. That's the key now. Rutgers scored only 20 first half points. They already have 16 here in the second. Dabney controls for Rutgers. Rutgers from the outside run, second half, seven of 12 on the field. Much better. Penetration, Kenny, they're getting better looks, high percentage shots. Nice pass. Sherrod 
dishing off to the wide open Gabney and Lewis Orr calls timeout. Rutgers has pulled to within eight thanks to a nine three run. 12.37 remaining. Second half from the Meadowlands. One more look. Gabney with the easy layup. At Advance, we believe in doing it yourself. So we made this commercial ourselves. Hey, Charles, what are you doing? Just getting ready to install a new battery out there for a customer. I see. <laughs> Pretty cool outfit. Wow, well, where'd you get those awesome goggles, battery guy? Funny. <laughs> battery guy walks the earth in search of a battery. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, battery guy. Bow before him. The energy at the Garden is phenomenal. My favorite moment has to be coaching St. John's to the Big East Tournament Championship. Nothing compares to college basketball at Madison Square Garden. Everyone wants to be there for the next great moment. Don't miss two Big East showdowns at Madison Square Garden. On Sunday, January 20th, senior Anthony Glover leads St. John's against Villanova. Then on Saturday, January 26th, the Red Storm take on one of the nation's top defensemen, John Linehan and Providence. For great seats, call Ticketmaster or visit thegarden.com. My wife, she thinks my hobby is a weird obsession. And what's that? Nick's memorabilia. I have Frazier's jersey from the 72 playoffs, the comb that braided Spreewell's hair before his first game as a Nick, and the socks LJ wore when he made that miracle four-point play. You can just smell the love. You're a real fan. Mm. Go home. Tell your wife you're fine. For sure. The Knicks on MSG. You in? Split allegiances here at the Meadowlands with Seton Hall leading Rutgers by eight. We're on our BMW ultimate drive of the game. Beautiful job by Coleman. He's stepping it up now for Rutgers. He just knifes his way through there. Would not be denied. Here he is again. Look at that move, huh? Manga trying to stop him down there, but Jerome Coleman says, no way, Manga's 6'10". He stepped it up. Mike Sherrod has really stepped it up in the second half. Dabney a lift. So suddenly, Rutgers getting themselves going offensively. Eight-point game. Lewis Orr says, let's bear down defensively. And you can see the shooting by Rutgers much improved. And Seton Hall has dipped in this second half. I can't help but think, Kenny, when you get the lead and you have a chance to try to build on it and put a team away, a lot of times there's some let up subconsciously. And it just happens. Desmond Herod, Damian Frey, and Mauricio Brownwell in the game for the Pirates. Brownwell from three. And the rebound is controlled by John Allen. Missed twice on taps, and here comes Sharon. Use the glass on that close shot. Get it in close. Stuff it or use the glass, but that soft touch shot can bounce out on you. Foul called on Barrett, his second. I mean, monumental effort on the boards here by the Hall, but you got to convert. Check out, check out Allen right there. And that's where he tries to just lay it home. He had the angle to bank that ball in or stuff it. it seemed like there was a lid. Barrett shake it up on the play, replaced by Ty Shine. Mike Sherrod fouled on the play. Sherrod leading Rutgers with 10 points. Dabney has eight, Coleman nine, Shields with six. Make it 10 for Eugene Dabney as Rutgers pulls to within six. Well, Rutgers was getting nothing offensively inside in the first half, and Dabney's taking care of business in the second half. Rutgers chipping away at the Seton Hall lead. Allen again could not hit, tied up. It will be Rutgers basketball. But first a timeout, 11.40 remaining, second half. Rutgers coming back strong. Ron, the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, no stranger to big comebacks. Now they've had some big deficits this year. They came back, as we talked about before, Kenny, you mentioned down 17 a year ago here. They were able to come back and win against Seton Hall. Of course, the Georgetown game as well recently. They were down big and came back and won that game. 
And they've trailed this one by 14. They've cut it to a six-point Seton Hall lead. Look at that run, and look at the points in the paint. They, they just couldn't get anything done in the paint in the first half. And Eugene Dabney's taking care of that, helping and contributing to that 14-2 advantage. And Rutgers run already with 20 points this half. They scored 20 in the first half as Brenwell is whistled for his first. As intensely as the teams have played, there hasn't been, you know, too many fouls in the second half. First half, there were more. Better shooting in the second half. I think that'll intensify. Free throws will be important. Suddenly, Rutgers with a chance to close to four, maybe three if they can hit a three. Dabney looking underneath. That's the first Rutgers turnover of the half. Dabney better off to be down low rather than throwing the ball down low. And Seton Hall Rod has not committed a turnover this half. Now the defense and the intensity I think will pick up second half of this second half. <laughs> well called on Coleman. It's his third. I guess that will be the fourth quarter of the game. That's right. He seems to go in waves. I thought the intensity was higher in the first half. Offenses have picked up here in the second. But as the game tightens up, which it feels like it will, the defensive stops will be the key. Man-to-man -man by Rutgers. They've stayed in it throughout. Marcus Toniel back in the game for Seton Hall. And there is turnover number one by the Pirates this half. Nice move to the hoop of Sherrod. Unable to hit. And then the foul committed by Shields as he went for the rebound. Check it out, Sherrod. I mean, again, he doesn't use the backboard. Trying to lay that ball in, and he just got too soft with it. Kiss it off the glass, and Gary Waters goes to the no coat after that one. 10.38 remaining, second half. Seton Hall leading by six. Kenny Albert, Ron Perry coming to you from the Continental Airlines Arena in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Irve Lombazana checks in for the first time this half. As Rashad Kent is called for his third personal foul. Well, Lamazana and Tony L both on the floor. We talked about their rivalry throughout their high school days and the war of words that took place this week in the local newspapers. A lot of talk. They did not do much, though, either one of them in the first half, but perhaps they'll step it up and contribute to their teams here in the second half. They each won two games against the other in high school. Frey bottled up by Kent. Another Seton Hall turnover. Rutgers looking to cut the lead down to four. Or three as Lamazana attempts the three and Kent keeps it alive. Nice rebound, a fresh 35. That was a good look. Now Sherrod calling out a set play. Under 10 minutes to go in the half. Sherrod's really key things for Rutgers. He's so quick. Good matchup with Barrett. Looks to gain a step on Barrett. Off the front of the rim, but Kent was right there for the follow. Now Kent's working hard. He kept that ball alive with the rebound, and he really deserved that basket with a lot of hard work. And give Rutgers credit, down 13 at the half. They've got themselves right back in this game. First points of the game for Kent. Lane steps behind the line. No good. Kent with a strong rebound. His 10th rebound of the game. Been a game of runs, Kenny, and right now the hall, which couldn't miss, it seemed, has gone cold, and Rutgers, which had no offense first half, has really found the range here in the second half. Rutgers trailing by only four. They trail by 14 earlier this half. And Damian Frey is called for the block. Made contact with Kent. Frey's second personal foul. <laughs> You see the isolation over here with Rashad Kent and it's kind of a touch foul right there, a little bit of a ride. Seeing perhaps a little bit more physical play on other ones tonight. From three, Coleman could not hit. 
Greg Morton back in the game for Seton Hall and Ron the Pirates have gone cold. They have not scored in over five minutes. They went through a six and a half minute drought in the first half. Yeah, Barrett and Lane have to take charge, particularly Barrett. It was right around the same time in the first half when Seton Hall did not score for six and a half minutes. I just didn't think they came out second half with the same fire that they had to end the first half. Coleman stepped out of bounds. He can't believe it. Seton Hall ended the first half on a 21 to 4 run and led by 13 at halftime. John Allen for Seton Hall replacing Marcus Toniel. And a couple of substitutions for Rutgers. Joel Wiggin and Jason McCoy checked back in replacing Mike Sherrod and Ricky Shields. 8.19 to go, second half, Seton Hall by just four. Allen can't find anyone. Ball's timeout. Jason McCoy all over that inbounds play. 6'9", only weighs 185, but he's got long arms. There's no openings to get that one in. That's a good use of your 30-second timeout. Now Lewis Shore and Gary Waters caught things over with their respective clubs. Well, you see the records of the Big East against other conferences. For all Big East information, statistics, and news, log on to www.bigeast.org. See some of the records against other conferences. Impressive against the Big Ten, but the ACC Big 12 had the advantage. Conference USA, SEC, so you can pick up some of that action, which has been non-league action this year. Well, UConn just had a big Big 12 matchup with number five, Oklahoma, and took them right to the wire at Gamble Pavilion, losing by two. And you were up there last night for the Virginia Tech game. Oh, yeah, UConn came right back, 35-point victory. They just overmatched the Hokies in that one. Lane is called for steps. So the Pirates turn it over. Seton Hall shooting only 21%. In the second half. Really struggling, and you know what? They're in their half-court set. They've been more impressive in this game when they've been able to push the ball out, and suddenly, you've got to give Rutgers credit. They're right back here, Kenny. Half-court possession's critical now. Under eight minutes to go. Coleman bottled up by Allen. Lane came over with the steal. And now Barrett pulls it back out. Nice job getting back by Rutgers that time, and again, by getting back, they forced Seton Hall into the half-court set. Seton Hall has been able to establish really nothing in the paint tonight. The Pirates have not scored now in more than six minutes. McCoy is whistled for his first. A timeout on the floor with 7.32 remaining. Second half. A 14-point deficit has been cut to four by the Scarlet Knights. The first battle of New Jersey this season, the first for both head coaches, Lewis Orr and Gary Waters, fans from both clubs. Cheering on the Scarlet Knights and the Pirates in a four-point game. Well, it's been an interesting game tonight. You had Rutgers early, Seton Hall drought, Seton Hall then pours it on, goes up by 13 at the half, but you've had Rutgers really battle back and they show their character. And I think this is a game, half-court possessions, critical, take good care of the ball. Could very well go down to the wire. Barrett off the inbound, nails a three. Nice job by Lewis Ord, draws it up, gets Barrett involved. He's really the catalyst for this Pirate team. Allen the assist, fourth three-point field goal of the game for Barrett. And Barrett with the rebound of the Wigan miss, and then Wigan called for the reach in his first. That's his first. Shields and Sherrod check back in for Rutgers, along with Dabney. So the Scarlet Knights with their starting five on the floor. For Andre Barrett, Ron, 20 points tonight. Six times in his last 10 games, he scored at least 20.
after reaching 20 only once in his first 37 collegiate games. Well, he's looked upon to score more this year. The production not there inside. So along with Lane, they're more offensive. Well, Lane's always been offensive minded with the jumper, but Barrett looking for it more as well. He's passing the ball well, Kenny, with his penetration too. Lane with 15, Barrett 20 points. Barrett underneath for Bradwell, and Mauricio Bradwell is fouled by Eugene Dabney. So Bradwell will head to the free throw line. It's Dabney's first. Well, that's the penetration I was just talking about. You've got to have a quarterback on the floor, a point guard that will take charge, run it. Barrett did a nice job right there to draw the defense. Made a nice bounce pass. You've got to have your big guys ready when you do that and try to finish. Check it out. He just beats Sherrod off the dribble and see Dabney's got to help out and that's what frees up Branwell. So you got a point guard doing that and Sherrod's done a much better job for Rutgers in the second half as Barrett just pours the points on Kenny. Six points now for Branwell who hit both free throws. Seton Hall doing a good job from the line now. Coleman from three gets his own rebound and then runs into Dabney. Yeah, Point Seton Hall lead, six and a half to play. Barrett really making good eye contact with Lewis Orr. He, you, you really want to be an extension of the coach out there. Brownwell rejected, and then has the ball knocked away. Close to a goal 10. Let's see if that ball was on its downward flight. Check, oh, nice pass by Morton Brandwell. I don't think so. I think it was borderline. That ball was still reaching its peak. It's okay if it kisses the glass. Close one, but I think good no call. There have been 12 block shots in the game as Daphne picks up his second. Pirates have blocked seven. Scarlet Knights have blocked five. Oh, it's stripped out of his hand. He didn't trap that box. Wait, can these guys get up? That ball was a foot, at least a foot over the basket. <laughs> Lane to the line, 78% free throw shooter. Free throws will be very important the last six minutes. They're important throughout the game, but when you're in a close one and you go to the line, you've got to get them to go. Nice backcourt. Andre Barrett, Darius Lane. Seton Hall on six of six from the line. In the second half, they are on a 7 nothing run. Here we go again. <laughs> After they did not score for over six minutes. Same story as the first half. They have both clubs go into droughts. Well, they don't get the consistent scoring in the paint. As a result, if you go cold for a couple of minutes, you just come up dry. Offensive foul. Third foul of the last minute committed by Dabney. Eugene Dabney, been a force offensively. That's good position by Branwell. Good call, he's plowed into him. Allen double teamed out near midcourt. Branwell is called for steps. Rutgers now will turn the pressure up. Good job defensively. Officials have done a nice job in this game. We've got some physical play, some quickness, and you always end up with some tough, quick calls you've got to make every time you're out there with these guys. Seaton Hall up by 11. They have led by as many as 14. The skip pass is there if they look for it. That cross-court pass. There's Coleman. Coleman with his second three-point field goal. The fourth of the game by Rutgers. And that can get you back in in a hurry. Oh, that was a dangerous pass. Allen made a great catch. Barrett shot was short. Gets his own rebound. I love it when a point guard does that. He brings it right out. Works the clock and sets up the offense. Nicely done. Five rebounds tonight for Andre Barrett. Beautiful feed for Allen. And he is fouled. And for Dabney Ron, that is his fourth foul in about the last two minutes. Check 
broke it out. Nice pass by Barrett. Catches Allen on the head. A lot of ball, but caught him on the head, and that's a foul. Pirates, as I mentioned, six of six from the line in the second half. <laughs> we jinxed him. <laughs> Looked like it was going to go. Dabney sits down with the four personals all coming in the last two minutes. He's replaced by Lamazana. He was playing very well. He just started reaching. And of course, that offensive play picked up two in about 20 seconds, Ken, the last exchange. Seton Hall by nine, under five minutes to play from the Meadowlands. Scarlet Knights get it across. Lamazana has not scored tonight. Foul before the shot attempt by Greg Morton. Morton's fourth. From the Continental Airlines Arena, Kenny Albert with Ron Perry. Seat Paul leading Rutgers 54 45. Pirates with a big run at the end of the first half and a big run recently here in the second, led by their sophomore sensation, Andre Barrett. Four of seven from three, 20 points, five rebounds, two assists. It's a nice line. It's what you call doing it all from the point guard spot. Ty Shine in, two three zone. Rutgers needs to hit now. The clock starting to work against them here. Down nine, they need to convert. Lamazana's shot was short, and that's rebound number six, pulled down by Barrett. Look at him in there with the tall men. Dribbles around them. All right, now the Pirates slow things down. Shine and Barrett in the backcourt. Allen with Morton and Brownwell up front. Just over four minutes to play. Barrett nearly stepped into the backcourt. <laughs> he did. Shine had some trouble with it, pulls it back up, and then feeds Brownwell underneath. Ty Shine's a senior. That was a lot of poise. Found the open man. Big bucket right there. And Gary Waters says, guys, double figures again, 11. We got to make a move now. We had another lapse. Season high, eight points for the freshman, Mauricio Brownwell. Ron, let's take a look at our best play of the game, brought to you by Advanced Auto Parts. The best part is our people. Well, what's nice about that is Shine makes a good catch, then he regroups, and what a nice pass as he catches the defense flat-footed inside. That's a good heads-up play. Check him out. He's going to jump it. Yep. Oh, no. Nice job with the look. Lamazana came toward him. Hands were down. Nice catch and finish by Branwell. Branwell's given Lewis Orr some nice minutes as of late. Played for three different high schools. Brooklyn native. Six foot eight freshman. And he scored a season high eight tonight. What was nice there is he had his hands ready. That's a bullet pass and Ty Shine into the game making the most of his minutes with the look. I mean Shine a guy that's got all kinds of experience. Played in the NCAA tournament and he's really come up big on a number of occasions tonight. Around the Scarlet Knights have scored only three points the last six minutes. So as Seton Hall gets hot, Rutgers has gone cold. When it's the half court set, Rutgers can get tentative. They need to remain aggressive and take it to the goal. Look for shots. Ricky Shields will head to the free throw line. The biggest problem now is 331 to go. Look for Rutgers on any conversions, even when they don't. They're going to put a lot of pressure on Seton Hall now. And Seton Hall will have a chance to get the job done late in this game from the line. Shields is Rutgers' best foul shooter, along with Coleman. They're both 78%. Rutgers now 4 of 11 on the night. That's not getting it done. It's also not a lot of free throws. It's an indication that you're not getting the ball down low much and driving to the basket. Shields hitting on both. Cutting the Seton Hall lead to nine points with 3.31 remaining. Seton Hall Pirates on top by nine, late second half. Tonight's game is being brought to you by BMW. Test drive the ultimate driving machine at your local BMW center. Well, it's been a game of runs. The Seton Hall Pirates looking to raise their record to 9-7 overall, 2-2 two two in 
conference play led by their backcourt combination of Andre Barrett and Darius Lane. They've combined for 37 of Seton Hall's 56 points. And Barrett's really controlled the play for Seton Hall. Lane's gone a little quiet offensively in the second half. Here's that pressure we talked about. And this is the attack. Get it in, get it to Barrett in the middle and attack. Nicely done by the Hall. Sherrod called for his second. Barrett has attempted two free throws so far tonight, Ron. By the end of the game, where do you think that number will be? Eight. At least. I think the way he handles the ball, it, it, it makes it difficult to press Seton Hall with Barrett out there. He's so quick. But right now, Rutgers doesn't have much of a choice with a 10-point deficit, 328 to go. So this game should be pretty fast and furious down the stretch. Barrett, 22 points, four above his average. Scored 10 in the first half, 12 so far here in the second. Seton Hall by 11. Coleman could heat up. Of course, you've got Sherrod and Shields ready to launch from three. They've used 20 seconds on this possession. And Brownwell commits his third, sending Lamazana, who has not scored tonight, to the free throw line. Now, Lamazana just has not gotten into the flow of this game. He's tried a couple of threes. He's a guy that they, you know, really could get some nice things from in the paint there, and he can step out. Darius Lane back in. He replaces John Allen. Rutgers now 5 of 13 from the line. Lamazana 69% for the season from the free throw line. Really took his time on that second one. That was the whole difference. Full court pressure. There's Barrett again. They get it into the side. And then Barrett in the middle. Beautiful job. Radwell from Barrett. Seton Hall by 12. Nice job by Randwell with the finish. Coleman short from three. And now Barrett slows things down with 2.45 remaining. Well, Rutgers really closed the gap late, but they're in trouble now with Barrett able to work the clock with Shine. This is a nice lineup right, right out there for Lewis Orr. Good handlers on the floor. Essentially got two point guards with Shine and Barrett. And Shine will head to the line, fouled by Shields, his second. Seton Hall held a couple of meetings from the last few days after Andre Barrett and Marcus Toniel were very outspoken after the loss to Syracuse on Tuesday. Regarding the effort of their teammates down the stretch in a blowout, they felt some of their teammates essentially gave up. Pirates cleared the air, and they came out tonight in a rivalry game and have given a very strong effort. Well, if it reflected itself tonight in the intensity level that we saw, that was a positive. Again, as, as a general matter, better not to communicate those thoughts through the paper. But at the same time, when you have young players, you will have to find guys that are going to be leaders and say, hey, guess what? We are not going to allow ourselves to lose certain games. And you have that intensity in that fight. And, and in some respect, you like some young guys saying, we've got to have that. We don't like losing. Oh, nice job by the Hall. Big, big possession. And Barrett and Tony L looking back said, yeah, maybe we shouldn't have aired it out of the newspapers. However, it led to a positive team meeting. Right. We cleared the air. And look what's happened tonight. Exactly right. Yeah, sometimes you need that spark, a couple of guys to step up. Hey, look, at the end of the day, you want to win. And, and if that, that's what it takes to get you guys fired up, the results are there tonight. Barrett for Bradwell again. And Coleman commits his fourth. Barrett's had a terrific floor game for Seton Hall's I like this lineup late with Shine out there. And for Rutgers, they were just too inconsistent with their offense tonight. They couldn't get into a hot streak. They made a good effort in the second half, but the foul shooting difference has been huge. Oh, rattles home. And we've talked throughout the evening, Rod, about the lack of scoring from the front court for Seton Hall. Morton only two points tonight. Manga has not scored. Tony L has not scored. Allen has six. But then on the other end, look at what Bradwell has given the Pirates. 12 points.
off the bench, his career high. Granwell's done a nice job. Allen's chipped in with a with a few, but you need that because you've got to have some balance, and the result has generally been when the backward penetrates, you get some great looks. Kent, it's good, and the foul. So Rashad Kent will head to the line with a minute 42 remaining. Unfortunately for Rutgers, too little, too late. They need to get more of that, you know, Kent scoring inside. Dabney had a couple of good moments. But they need to balance their outside scoring as well. Look at that difference from the line. There you go. Kent's first successful three throw tonight in four attempts. These teams will do it again at the rack. Saturday, February 23rd, late in the regular season. Rutgers won both meetings last year. Seton Hall on their way to a victory here tonight. Barrett takes it all the way. Beautifully done by Barrett. You'd think he's working the clock, but he takes what the defense gives him. And coaches will say, take the open layup, otherwise work the clock. Just nicely done. Next up for Rutgers, they will host West Virginia on Wednesday. For Seton Hall, a trip to Georgetown for a game on Wednesday night, and then the Pirates host West Virginia next Friday. Not a lot of easy ones in there. Again, the balance, the competition is there in the Big East. I think the conference is underrated this year in terms of its competition. And look at Barrett's numbers. Shot it well, put the big points up on the board, and also, how about that? Seven boards for the little guy. And also, he assists, but he made a lot of good passes where the conversion wasn't there. Just well done. John Lombardi crunching the numbers for us. Excellent job as always tonight. And John tells us Barrett has matched his career high with the seven rebounds and is too shy of his career high in the points column. John's on his game as usual with those numbers, and Barrett made him work a little bit. The right. intensity level there for Seton Hall. You can see, I saw it, I think, in Lane early in Barry. You could just see they were fired up. Barrett's career high. A couple of weeks ago in the holiday festival at Madison Square Garden, scored 26 against Iona. He has 24 here tonight. As Branwell has fouled out, but tonight his best effort this season. 12 points for the freshman. Mauricio Brownwell also grabbed three rebounds, one assist, one steal. And that's a positive for the Seton Hall Pirates. Well, it sure is, especially on a night where they weren't getting much else inside. And in this league, you really can't be one-dimensional, but the Seton Hall really isn't because they've got Barrett and Lane doing it from the outside. I thought John Allen played a, a steady game for Seton Hall. And, of course, Morton and Manga had some very good uh, defensive moments in this game. This was not an easy night for Rutgers to get things going inside. Ricky Shields hits one of two from the free throw line. Seton Hall by 15. Rutgers will drop to 10 and 6, 1 and 3 in conference play. Scarlet Knights only Big East win the overtime upset of Georgetown on Saturday. That was a big win. Georgetown, of course, winless so far. They've lost their first two conference games, but they will be very tough and competitive as the conference play continues. Seton Hall Pirates hearing it from the crowd. Barrett, the dish to Allen. And he was in a bit too deep. Wigan with his first bucket of the game. Working it to the final buzzer. Now, this is a good matchup. This will be a great game at the rack. I can feel the intensity of that one already. Good win, though, for the Hall tonight in front of their home crowd. Pirates win at 67-54, the first of many meetings between Lewis Orr and Gary Waters. Andre Barrett, Darius Lane, combined for 41 of the Pirates' 67 points. That made the difference. Nice job by the Hall and Lewis Orr getting the home victory. For producer Eric Posman, director Bruce Watson, and the rest of our crew here at the Meadowlands, Kenny Albert, Ron Perry saying so long, Pirates over the Scarlet Knights by 13.